Curtis Calhoun here with MMA News, and it's always great chatting it up with my next guest, Stevie Ray, who's getting ready to kick off the 2023 PFL season. How's it going, Stevie? Yeah, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks again for the time, man. Really do appreciate it. I want to get into fighting first, but obviously a lot going on with you and your family uh, this past week, uh, raising funds uh, for your daughter's brain surgery, uh, up to 120,000 pounds now or so on the GoFundMe page. I guess, uh, how much has it meant to you to get that kind of love from the MMA community? Yeah, it's epilepsy. It's brain surgery um, that she needs. Um, she's epileptic. She's got cortical dysplasia. Yeah, yeah, so they've now came back and offered us a much sooner date. Um, so, I mean, the fundraiser's still been obviously really positive because if we didn't do that, we wouldn't have got the surgery offer from the NHS any quicker either because we were told it would be the end of the year. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I mean, we, we've got options now. Um, we're looking at it both. Um well, obviously, if we do end up going with the, the NHS and the sick kids, we've uh, looked into either giving everybody their money back or donating it towards another charity or maybe giving like people the option. So if they want their money back, they can have it. And anybody that doesn't um, will either go towards maybe some towards like Myla's aftercare and then the rest we could maybe donate to the people that's actually doing the surgery, the sick kids, hospital in Edinburgh. Absolutely, man. And uh, I think one thing that really makes the MMA community in itself really unique is that I feel like whenever there is a time of crisis for one of its fighters, there, there, you know, there's always a time where the MMA community kind of rallies around, right, in terms of, you know, raising funds, raising support, and all that, I guess, uh, I, how much does that mean to you and your family to have that support from the sport and, and, and all that? Yeah, I mean, it's been so cool. Like, don't get me wrong, there's been a lot of people outside the MMA community as well, strangers, um, like, just people that know us, people that know Myla, family, strangers, and then but a big chunk of it has been from the MMA community. Uh, like you said, um, you know, some of the big profiles, like Dana White, um, Peter Murray from the PFL, they both gave £25,000 just between them two. Um I seen Paddy Pimlet gave a gave a thousand Shane Burgos like, um, and I've had messages as well. I mean, Dustin Poirier messaged me, which was pretty cool. Uh, messaged me on Twitter asking if uh, his um thing that he has going could help at all his charity. Um, yeah, it's just been totally overwhelming. Uh, with with a with a response, I had to. I woke up the first night through the night and I had to check my phone to see if it was all real or if it was like a dream. That's how surreal it's been. Uh, but yeah, it's been really cool um, to to see the love and support from everyone. In terms of what's next, what are we talking about in terms of a timetable for her treatment and surgery and all that? Well, we've, we've now been offered... Uh, the surgery at the sick kids hospital may 24th hmm. um so we were still going to look at getting a consultation with a private surgeon down in london um uh, but yeah well i mean we've been back and forth so it's actually causing a bit of a um different situation because you know natalie might my wife might think uh, like let's get it done private still and then i'm Maybe like, oh, maybe we should just get it done with the NHS because it's local. Um, and then, yeah, just so many different bits of advice. But uh, the main thing is, is Myla's going to get the surgery soon, 24th of May at the latest. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that like I said, that's the main thing. Um, and uh, hopefully, because obviously... There's a chance that it doesn't work. Uh, it's fifty. It's only a fifty to sixty percent chance that it actually stops the seizures. So she might then need another surgery after it. Um, so that's why a lot of people, because I, I exp I done a video explaining like what's happened. That NHS have now came forward after offered the surgery, um, and a lot of people have said like keep a hold of the money just now in case she needs another surgery. 
or for like the aftercare, um, or if yeah, I doubt it, but or if the NHS mucked us around and you know changed the day or something happens. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, the good thing is we've got options, and it looks like she's going to be getting surgery soon, and we can dig it for that. That is super exciting, man. Well, all the best to you and your family. And uh, I got to talk a little bit about fighting now, man. Obviously, uh, you got a big fight coming up in the PFL, getting ready to kick off the 2023 season against uh, Natan Schultz, obviously a really tough guy. Uh, what's your mindset heading into the season and uh, how pumped are you to get back in there? Yeah, I mean, he's won it twice. Uh, so I like I like fighting anybody that's, you know, got – got like a name got like you know a, a challenge everybody's challenging but sometimes you get these guys that have not got a name and they're still just as dangerous i'd prefer the best um you know like the pets uh you know if you look at some of the guy the big names i've fought michael johnson joe lozon ross pearson um uh, Anthony Pettis, uh, you know, I've beat, I've beat a lot of the big names. I've fought some big names and lost as well, like Paul Felder and Olivier Mercer and whatever else. But, uh, yeah, I just like, you know, I, I like the big names and uh, or somebody that's going to bring it. Nathan Shaw, he looks like he comes to bring it. Um, and I'm excited. I, th- I think it's going to be a good fight. I believe I've got the skills to put him away. Um, so we'll see. After 14 years in the sport, do you feel like, you know, kind of having those new challenges and, and new opportunities to to face different guys? And like you mentioned, like those big name value guys is is something that you really need at this time of your career to really get you motivated, especially to get in the gym and training and all that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I was super motivated, probably the most motivated for uh, the past fight, like just because the big name and then obviously the million dollars was a big motivation as well but I actually started to become a bit of like a like I couldn't wait until it was done because there was that much pressure and stuff so uh but yeah the like I mean I, I'm not a hundred percent sure but this might be my last year uh fight like I said fighting's fucking tough man uh the lifestyle of fighting um having to train day and night be away from home all the time. You, there's no much time to actually have a life when you're a fighter, especially during this tournament. I mean, four fights last year, each fight camps, two to three months. You're pretty much fucking dieting or fighting and training the whole year. Uh, so I think my initial plan is obviously to try and win this year. But after this year, I think I could see myself taking a bit of a break or calling it a day. Um, like I'd really need I think after the tournament this year I'd need big fights give me give me fucking somebody like Jake Paul or something like I'll box him and then fight MMA with him Uh, we can do the the thing that he's won boxing and he's a lot bigger than me as well but I'd still be up for something like that Um, or another thing like boxing Anthony Pettis I thought would be cool I'd just beat him twice in MMA I noticed he's boxing now Um, yeah stuff like that I'd like uh, you know that stuff like that would continue to fight. When it comes to the season format, do do you feel like it it was almost more difficult than you realized it would be in terms of the grind, the quick turnarounds in between fights and and all the media and all that stuff? Like, do you feel like that kind of has, has led you to this point where you're considering taking that break and, and possibly even calling it a career? Yeah, it's definitely tough, man. Like, you can hear it in a lot of the interviews. I remember watching Olivier's interviews and he seemed so fucking unhappy and fed up. And, um, and you know, they're all saying the same thing. This is so grueling. And it is. Um, I mean, fortunately, I, know I only got injured once last year and that was after the Martinez fight. Um, I tore my meniscus uh, twice. So I had two tears on my meniscus. Uh, I took a week off, iced my knee. Um, really needed surgery, but uh, just fucking started the fight camp. I, I let, the first day of the fight camp, I had to stand still on the spot and hit pads. No footwork at all. And uh, and just grind through it. That was for the Pettis fight that I ended up twisting them. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, we just got through it, grind through it, worked around it. Eventually, the knee got a bit better. Uh, but, yeah, the, I mean, just fucking work around it because it's that or you pull out and you don't get paid. That's what's so brutal about this sport. I mean, I could get injured even in the next couple of days. It's 10 days to my fight. I've been training since, like, January 3rd or 4th or something. All that work, all the money I've invested in training and obviously the not working part as well. So you're losing it on, like, if I didn't end up fighting, um, the amount of money you lose, it's just crazy. Um, so there's always that risk. And that's another reason, obviously, not just with the PFL tournament, just the uncertain. There's not a lot of security when it comes to um MMA financial security and that's sometimes where I'm like fuck just give me a nine to five a guaranteed wage um it takes the pressure off especially when I provide for six of us you know my wife and four kids but uh but yeah obviously I'm I'm doing this year I'm gonna see how it see how I feel after it because uh, nothing's like completely concrete um and uh yeah take it for there basically you mentioned Jake Paul a little bit there. One thing he's he's really brought attention to is is you know fire pay, financial security, and all that. I guess what are your thoughts on on Jake Paul making the move to MMA and also bringing awareness to issues like fighter pay and, and all that? Yeah, I mean it's really cool, and supposedly he's just got involved in the PFL, and I'm not sure if he's invested any money. Um, but yeah, I mean it's cool. So let's start fucking start maybe. I don't know if he already has, like I said, but let's uh, deliver what you're saying then. Fucking more money in my bank and then that's when I'll start seeing it uh, and believing it. But uh, yeah, it's really cool though. I get, you know, he gained my respect when I, when I heard that because before when I've heard them, you know, I've been like, eh, there's been times where I've no been a bit of a fan, but yeah, he definitely made a fan out of me when he started saying about fighter pay and... Um, you know, stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's signed PayPal and he said he's going to fight MMA this year. So, um, I know I'm maybe not the biggest of names, but um, I'll do it there right now. I would box him and I would fight him MMA. You know, the back-to-back -back, uh, thing that he wanted to do. I, I'm only 155, but it is a struggle for me to make 155 all the time. Um, the start of this camp, I was 205. Uh, a bit, you know, a bit chubby as well, but uh, yeah, it just shows you like how I've lost like 50 pounds this fight camp. Um, so yeah, I, I'd fight him at like 185 or whatever. Have there been talks with the PFL? I mean, just preliminary talks in terms of hey, like if, if Jake Paul needs an opponent, I'll step up, or have you talked with the PFL at all about that? Eh, not really. I've mentioned it on social media before, but I mean, you're really the first kind of person that I've actually spoke publicly and said, you know what, I would, would, and I'd be up for it as well. I'd be motivated, obviously, one, because you know you're getting paid pretty well if you do it, but not only that, like the challenge. Uh, I, I've always wanted to do a boxing fight as well. Um, so there's that part, the challenge for me, and then the challenge for me if I fought him MMA as well. I mean he's got heavy hands. Um he's supposedly got some wrestling uh experience um from when he used to wrestle. So uh yeah it'd be interesting. And gotcha man. Well um I got I wanna switch gears a little bit here and talk a little bit about your last fight against uh OAM the twenty twenty two PFL championships. First round was kind of back and forth second round um, you had a really big round up until the end of that round there, and it looks like you were about to win that round going away. I mean, and then you got caught, and obviously that's the fight game, right? So I guess what are uh, what are some of your takeaways from that fight and, and how things played out? So I could take a few things away from that round and the fight. One, fucking I need to be more aware of checking the leg kicks. I was prepared for it, but they were faster than than I expected. He knocked me down with a few leg kicks. It then started, like, I started thinking about it because it was hurting a little bit, the leg kicks as well. Um, so, yeah, be more prepared for that. Um, in terms of the knockout, 
Um, I believe it's one of those ones where I just got caught. He threw the right shot at the right time. He'll probably never throw a better punch in his life. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe have my hands a bit higher though. Obviously, my, if my hand was a bit higher, I could have blocked. Um, but uh, yeah, and then when I had his back, uh, I remember saying that I wanted to try and mount him and, and punch him because uh, I knew he'd be good at defending the choke. And when I've when I've mounted him, he's managed to stand up and escape. Uh, so yeah, just maybe I should have just kept trying to get the choke. I also didn't have to chase him as much. When I ended up on the feet, I was trying to pressure him back I maybe could have coasted a little bit more and won the round like you said I, I was winning that round so it would have been one each um, he won the first round I want, I would have won the second round and it would have been interesting to see how the third round would have went obviously but you know what shit happens I got fucking sparked out and uh, yeah just got to get back up and go again Absolutely. Look, look, looking forward to that fight, man, and uh, looking forward to seeing you bounce back. Uh, before we wrap things up here, once again, I really do appreciate the time. It's always great to chat with you, man. Uh, what's your message to all the fans uh, getting ready to watch you fight and uh, getting ready for the 2023 PFL season? Yeah, just tune in. I'm going to be coming for the finish. I'm going to make it uh, an exciting fight. Um, I'm sure it's going to be fun. Thanks for all the support for, obviously, the you know, watching the fights and wishing me luck. And then also thanks to everybody that, you know, helped share, donate um, for the funds for my daughter. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate it so much. Love you all. And, uh, yeah, thanks. I got you, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you making some time. I know you got a lot going on right now. All the best with these uh, final days of camp. And uh, I'm sure we'll definitely chat again soon, man. Thank you so much for the time. Thanks, buddy.